The other thing that's been disturbing this week is this Wendy Williams documentary that's coming out, or is it out? Uh, I didn't. I didn't watch it. I, I refuse to watch it because uh, I think somebody's just completely taken advantage of her situation. Hold on, let me see if it's aired yet. Wendy Williams. Uh, doc producers, if we'd known she had dementia, none of us should watch the heart. Yeah, I'm not watching it. Uh, let me see. Has it started airing yet? Whoa. Is it on Lifetime? Is it Lifetime? Really? Really? Lifetime? Anyways, I shouldn't even give the network, which I already did. Uh, so, sorry. So, who's ever behind this Wendy Williams doc? Um, I mean, you're really taking advantage of someone at their lowest. And I don't see the benefit in this documentary at all. You're just exploiting um, her dementia. What? I'm not sure what she's got. I'm not going to watch it, but you know, and I hate the internet can be so ugly because Wendy's clearly at the, probably one of the lowest points of her life right now. And whoever is the mastermind behind this, I've heard too many names being thrown around. I go, you really got to, you really are a piece of shit. And I'm putting that mildly to do this. And it, it, all it is is a money grab because this doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help Wendy. It doesn't help people watch it. You're not going to learn anything from it. It's just a money grab. So whoever is behind this, you are a piece of shit because that's all it is. When, and here's the bad part. Wendy's always been cool with me. Always. As, as, as many people say, you know, she's a. that's what she did. She was a gossip girl gossip tv show whatever but i don't think she ever had malicious intent behind what she was doing and a lot of people like didn't like her because she asked tough questions and she um she called people out sometimes and people don't like like facing the truth they don't like looking at themselves so this is what I, this i'll just say this is the wendy i know um when i did oh my god i'm i'm really leaking here this is crazy. Look at that. Uh, I met Wendy when we shot Think Like a Man. It was my first day on set. It was her first day on set. And we um, we were in the makeup trailer. And we were doing night shoots. So how, how movies work is like people get a lot at the makeup trailer usually can have two or three people in there getting their makeup done at the same time. So Wendy was over there getting hers done and then I came in just to get touched up on my face and hair and everything else like get haircuts in there and everything else so we just start talking she started talking about she loves New York uh she couldn't live in LA and I was like well I can live in LA but I couldn't live in New York and I was telling her decent places to eat in LA she was telling me where she likes to eat in New York and it was a good conversation and then of course she did think like a man too and but when Think Like a Man came out, so there was Kevin, Romney, Michael Ely, Terrence J, and hold on, Kevin, Romney, Jerry Ferreira, Michael Ely, Terrence J. Yeah, five. There were six guys in the cast, right? Well, when they did Wendy Williams, they just brought five of them. They didn't, they didn't bring me. And that's not a knock on the guys. That was just the studio was like, we're only bringing five. We're not bringing Gary. Uh, clearly, it was white people, publicists that didn't know my value, motherfuckers. So anyways, uh, when I saw it, I go, dang. I was thinking, because I was thinking Wendy Williams, that's, that's my fan base. Wendy brought me a couple months later by myself to, to, to be on her show. And that was her call, like, Cause she, I guess she had asked around like, where's Gary? And then, you know, cause we had met and we had a good conversation, you know, briefly about an hour, but you know, you connect with some people you connect. And so she asked where I was and I wasn't there. So we got a phone call after the press run was over and they was like, yo, Wendy wants to have you on the show. 
And that was that was that was her call. So she was the first person to ever put me on a daytime talk show just by myself, not doing stand up, just to go over my career and what I got going on. So I always like appreciate that about her. And anytime I had something coming out, she'd always have me on her show. Uh, and then sometimes she would do these panel things and she'd invite me and stuff. So, you know, Wendy was always cool with me. And then, of course, when I had my divorce, she was the first talk show that I went on. Well, pretty much one of the only ones I went on to discuss it. And that's where she asked me out. And those rumors got going. We were seen on a date. No, we weren't. She asked me to dinner on her show. And then I told her, yeah, I'll meet you for dinner. And we had dinner with other people uh, at her favorite restaurant in New York. And we talked. And that was it. She went home. I went home. I called Uber. I'm sure she had a car service. We ran into a bunch of people that night. It was just dinner with friends is what it was. It wasn't like a typical date or anything. And it was cool. We just talked. And my thing is like this. Any ch anytime I have a chance, have a chance to eat with a, which you would consider a mogul, uh, I'm going to take advantage of it. Cause say what you want about Wendy Williams. If you know her backstory, she had a radio show, uber successful. Uh, she was making seven figures and she rolled the dice on herself on her talk show because how, how TV used to work, you would do a talk show and then they do a test run in like 10 cities real quick and for like a couple weeks to see if people are watching. And then they go from that. They decide, okay, do we want to pick this up to go nationwide? And she rolled the dice. She stopped working, had no backup plan, and was like, look, I'm going to leave this radio show over here, and I'm going to roll the dice on my uh, own talk show. And if the talk show doesn't go, then she's looking like a fool. But it went, and she rolled the dice on herself, and it paid off, and she made millions off of it and became popular. And so how do you not respect a person that rolls the dice on themselves like she did? Because even when I heard about it, I was like, so I thought it was going to be like some Steve Harvey thing. Like, is she going to do the talk show and radio? Because we all, when you're in the entertainment business, you hear about people, the talk shows before everybody else does. Like I, I heard about the Kelly Clarkson show way before anybody else did. And I, you know, of course I knew Steve was moving from Chicago to LA and you, I mean, you just hear about them. You just, I don't know. It's just through the grapevine. You hear about stuff. Uh, so for her to roll the dice on herself like that, I mean, you got to respect that. You got to respect it. And, you know, and it, I just feel like this this biopic or day in the life, I just think, I think whoever do it, it's just, it's just shitty. It's just shitty. It's not helping nobody. It's not helping her. You're not helping her legacy. You know, you're hurting her. It's just a money grab. And, and that's the most disheartening thing from it. It's not like we're going to learn anything from it. It's just like, let's just show Wendy at her worst and show all her demons for the world to see. Because you see, you see Bruce Willis right now. He got dementia. His family's protecting him. You might see a picture every now and then from one of his daughters of him. But they're not showing videos. They're not exploiting Bruce Willis. You're not going to see a Bruce Willis show like this where they're showing him at his worst and he can't remember things and he's repeating himself and he's clearly not the Bruce Willis will remember. Why would they do that? No, they're protecting him just like this. It's Wendy Williams. I mean, it, it goes to show you, man, your circle and who you surround yourself with and also your family. You'll learn a lot about people in situations like this. Look at, look at Chadwick Boseman when he was, we all knew something was wrong with him if you looked at his physical appearance, but we couldn't say for sure. And then when he passed away, I was like, man, how tight was his circle that they didn't let that out? They didn't let people see Chad when he was going through whatever. I'm sure there was issues where he was in pain and, and things like that. They didn't, they didn't let any of that out. Uh, I was, I'm trying to think. We all knew Charlie Murphy was sick, but Charlie stayed in the limelight. He was still out there touring, even through all his illness. But uh, there wasn't a documentary where 
he was on his deathbed and they were looking out. Look at Jamie Foxx more recently. Everything Jamie went through. I mean, his circle was so tight. Hell, they thought he was a clone at one point. Uh, but they never let nobody see Jamie at his worst. Even he said it. When he came out and finally talked, he goes, you know, they looked out for me, man. The hospital, my team. He was like, I had tubes coming out of me and I didn't look my best. And everybody made sure that we're going to protect him. We're going to build a cocoon around him and make sure nobody sees him when he's at his worst. And the same thing with Chadwick, the same thing with Bruce Willis and Wendy's people. No, let's exploit her. Let's get this last little bit of money we can get out of her. It's just, it's disgusting. 